Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And while you're here, make sure to subscribe, like, and share us with your network. We want to tell everybody what we got going on over here. So today, you all, think about this, your skin. Whether you are male or female, we all got the same issues between dryness between being too overly hydrated, as if that were a thing. There's a T-zone, there are pimples, there's hairs, there's all kinds of things. And what do you do about it? I don't know either, but my guest today is gonna let us know. Y'all please say hello to Nicole Hector. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Ricky. Thanks so much for joining us, Nicole. I really appreciate your time. Oh, of course, of course, anytime. I appreciate y'all heard her. She said anytime she's she'll regret that later. All right. So Nicole, you heard us in the intro. We are talking about skin today, but in particularly, we're talking about our face. Now I understand that you are an esthetician and a facialist. Did I get it right? Yes. Yes, you did. Yay. I am an esthetician and a facialist. I'm excited about esthetician because I can't hardly say the word. So let's start right here. Nicole, what's the difference between an estheticianist and a facialist? Um, so an esthetician is trained in multiple different um, techniques or modalities or skincare related things, um, which I am trained for. But a facialist focuses strictly on facials. So an esthetician may do skincare, facials, waxing, things of that nature, but a facialist it's just that I focus on facials. That is what okay. I do. Wow. So why focus strictly on facials? Is it because you don't like waxing? Tell the truth. Why facials? <laughs> to, to some degree, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I found that facials is, is what I love to do. Um, mm. And I was told once to do what brings me the most joy. Mm. And that's it. Facials brought me the most that joy is, in my career. That right there will do everything. And you, out of your love of what you do, started a business and you have an amazing spa. Tell us a little bit about your spa. So uh, the spa is Opulent Skin Suite. Um, it was created about almost five years ago. I opened Opulent Skin Suite almost five years ago. I can hardly believe it myself that I've made it this far. <laughs> um, it's been quite the journey, um, but Opulent Skin Suite is there for those who are looking for a place of respite and true care, um, self-care activity and wellness as a mm -hmm. focus. So although I do facials, I'm really focusing on uh, creating a space that inspires uh, one to take care of themselves and focus on their self-care and their overall health and wellness. I, I love that. And now with all of that, that the spa does, how can a facial contribute to something like that? So with facials, a lot of people think it's really superficial, which to some degree it is. Um, but when you're laying on a table, allowing someone to touch your face and, and treat your skin in that way, you're forced to sit still and be still and be quiet and calm with your thoughts. Um, so facials is a, is a great way to get you to really relax. Um, even for someone like me, it's hard for me to relax, but a facial is a great way to get me, you know, forced to sit still yeah. and really focus on, on my intentions in that moment. Yeah. I, I have not had a facial in forever and I'm thinking about it right now. I'm like, why haven't I done that? Oh yeah. That whole sitting still thing. So mm -hmm. it's know, hard. <laughs> it is. Now, do you all do primarily women or is it men and women that come to the spa? So I do have, um, men and women as clients, but my focus is mostly for women. Okay. All right. When you're dealing with some of these facial issues, are there issues that a facial can help detour or that can help correct? Oh, absolutely. Facials treat uh, a lot of different uh, skin concerns and conditions. Um, I treat clients that have uh, mild acne. I treat clients that have hyperpigmentation, dryness, excessive oiliness, um, 
fine lines, wrinkles. I do wow. a lot of anti-aging treatments. Mm -hmm. So facials are really, really beneficial. Yeah, I guess they would be. Now you said anti-aging because some of us who are of a certain age, you know, we, we're looking at things like that. What kind of mm -hmm. serums or what kind of products do you use on somebody's face? Oh, I use a lot of different products, but um, one of the main things that I can say about all of the brands or lines that I use, they are all very progressive. Um, all of the products are really gentle for the skin. I focus on mostly hydrating the skin because when your skin is hydrated, it can be its most healthy. Mm, so healthy skin yeah. is hydrated skin. So the serums that I'm using are going to be focused on hydrating the skin, plumping the skin. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because we live here in El Paso and in our desert arid environment and in the summertime, as you know, it can get hot as fish grease out here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are Absolutely. some of the things that you tell people about how to take care of their skin in climates like this? Oh, stay hydrated. That is the biggest thing. Stay hydrated inside and out. So you're going to want to be drinking lots and lots of water. Um, and also using hydrating products, creams, and serums on the skin. Oh, wow. But water and, is your friend. Yeah, water apparently is your friend. I, I, I do love that, and I'm all about drinking the water. Now, if you have folks who come in to see you for the first time, they've never been to a facialist. They have no idea what to expect. Can you tell them what it would be like going in? What is it that you do for a brand new client? Well, I treat all of my new clients and existing clients pretty much the same. Um, mm -hmm. The intake is, is really, really similar. But for me, when you come into my space, it's not straight to the bed. We're not going straight to the treatment table, you know, and I'm slapping products on your face. It really is a slow process. Uh, we ease into the service. I allow them to have a seat, offer them water or tea, sometimes wine, depending on, you know, what time of day it is. <laughs> um, and we chat. We have a discussion about what their specific needs and goals and intentions for that service that day is. If they've never had a facial, we're talking about what their skin concerns are, what their goals are, what they're looking to achieve. And it's really kind of like an interview process where I'm determining if they're a good fit for me and if I'm a good fit for them. That's huge because you will go into a lot of spaces and it's okay. I don't care if you're a fit or not. You're a client. You're spending your money. Get on in here. But I love mm -hmm. to hear you say, we let's make sure that we fit each other. So Absolutely. as there are places in town, that you can go to get a facial a massage. You can get anything done anywhere. If someone has says, I really want to get this done, but I don't know what to look for. What tips would you give someone interviewing, if you will, for a facialist? So I like to tell people to read reviews, read reviews check them out, go to their Google site, go to their website, find mm -hmm. someone who's been to them, find out what the experience is really like. Um, mm -hmm. So if someone's not familiar with me, they're not sure what to expect, I can talk myself up all day, right. um, but they really want to talk to my clients. They want to know from my clients what mm -hmm. it's like to work with me. Yeah, that's so true. Now in this day and age where pretty much anybody can get a license for anything online, is there licensing things that people need to look out for or ask about? Yes, they should be looking for a license for the service provider. Um, so an esthetician should have a an esthetician's license. It should be valid. So you should be able to see the expiration date on that pa piece of paper. Mine is located on a shelf in my suite. As soon as you walk in, you can see the salon license. You can see my license. Um, providers, uh, estheticians should also be insured. So that is something that they can look for as well. They can request that information. Um, if they're not sure that they have insurance, they can request to see an insurance certificate also. Um, mm -hmm. You also want to see if they're certified in any of the advanced modalities that they offer. I have multiple certifications. I keep a book in the suite with all of my certifications. So if clients ever want to see it, they're more than welcome to. I, that is so good to hear because, you you know, you hear so many people say, yes, I have all these things. But rarely do you hear somebody say, and the book is right here. You know, you mm -hmm. can, can check them out, do whatever you like. I mean, I think that's awesome. So here's the thing. So, Nicole, who gives the facialist a facial? <laughs> <laughs> that is a question I ask myself all the time. <laughs> Um, being a facialist, I am very, very selective of who I allow to test. 
Yeah. Um, because I know how I work and no one works the way that I do. Mm-hmm. So I give myself treatments, um, but there are not very many that I would go to for an actual facial. <laughs> Wow. Okay. I should, maybe I should. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, it's tough. <laughs> you gotta check, you gotta check out the competition. I know you never know. So yeah, do you, I probably should. See, I've just given you something else to do. You're welcome. <laughs> Let me ask you, do you do like consultations with people? Like if somebody says, Nicole, I've never done this before. I'm, I'm really interested, but I'm not sure what to do with any of this. Do you do consultations mm-hmm. for folks? Absolutely. So first time clients, they're getting a consultation that's that Mm -hmm. intake process where we're kind Mm -hmm. of interviewing each other. Mm -hmm. Um, But if people are not sure they actually want to move forward with the facial, I do offer a standalone consultation where we're just chatting Um, Mm -hmm. and I can describe to them what their treatment plan might look like, show Mm -hmm. them the tools that I may be using for their service, the products that I would be using for their service. We can do that Mm -hmm. over Zoom. We can do that in person. But yes, definitely. I offer the opportunity to consult with me once again to interview to see if we are a good fit. Now that is great because, you know, yay Zoom and everybody else, because a lot of these things can get done and it it saves folks time and travel and money in some cases, you know, so I think that's awesome. I appreciate that. Yes, you and I will be chatting later. I'm just saying. So, Nicole, what is it, again, people in this area and in other areas, you know, because we live in a military town. So Mm -hmm. you got folks coming from the East Coast. That, you know, with all the yummy humidity and their skin is supple Mm -hmm. and lovely, but they're military, they're coming here to the desert. What is one piece of advice that you would give to somebody coming from an area like that coming here to El Paso? As far as their skincare, um, the first thing they need to do is seek out a skincare professional to help them to adjust their regimen to suit this new climate. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things that I see coming from a place with a lot of humidity is their skin is immediately dry. Yeah. You know, they're dehydrated, they're dry, they're flaky, and they're not sure why, and they don't know what to do about it. The mm-hmm. products that they've been using for years are no longer working and they don't understand why. Right. So the best thing that they can do is seek out a skincare professional to kind of help them navigate this new climate and mm-hmm. their their specific skin needs. Yeah, that's such, I wish someone had told me that years when I first got here, because I got here from New York, where it's all nice and water, and they, and I came here, and then I turned into a pillar of salt. Anyway, so <laughs> this is what it is. So people who have a regular facial regimen, a lot of us wear makeup, you know, and we take our makeup off, but we may not be cleansing our faces as well as we need to be. What kind of advice would you give to somebody like that? So I recommend if you are a makeup wearer to double cleanse, Mm -hmm. you're going to cleanse your skin twice. A lot of people don't do that. They cleanse once or they use a makeup, you know, remover wipe or something like Mm -hmm. that. And that's Mm -hmm. it. But you really should be cleansing your skin twice. Your first step is going to be to remove your makeup. Mm -hmm. The second cleansing is going to be to actually cleanse your skin and get down into the pores. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's good stuff. And then moisturizing. I mean, because, you know, those of us raised in the South, we had two moisturizers. One was Vast, the other was Olene. Okay, so we use Vaseline, baby oil, all this stuff. What are what are some of the better opportunities for um, hydrating and moisturizing your skin? So for some, it's going to be a layering process. They are going to use serums and a moisturizer. Some people Mm -hmm. are going to use moisturizers topped with an oil. Um, So similar to the effects of what the Vaseline would give you, but Mm -hmm. with um, products that are better suited for their specific skin. But it's going to vary based on the person and their Mm -hmm. skin needs because not everyone is the same. That's so true. And here's, and finally, just real quick, men, for some reason, don't moisturize. What is wrong with that? What is going on there? I don't I, I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sure. cuz they have skin too and then they they shave, they have all this stuff and their skin is just as susceptible to like you said some of the other skin concerns. Should men be moisturizing their skin also? 
Yes, they should. Men should be doing all the things that we do. Um, although a lot of them don't, <laughs> mm-hmm. they should be, they should be. So it's yeah. our job to kind of convert them over to this, this uh, lifestyle. Okay. <laughs> to the men that watch this show, get y'all some moisturizer, get your life together at the very least, get a consultation. Nicole, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or get in contact with you, what's the best way to do that? Um, so you can send me an email. Uh, it's Nicole at opulent skin um, You can also check out the website, which is opulent skin um, and my Instagram page as well, which is opulent skin sweet. I love it. Y'all heard it here first. Now, don't worry if you didn't get any of that information because there's so much of it. All of her contact information is going to be in the description below. Make sure to check it out. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our content as well. Nicole, my friend, before I let you go, we're going to play a game. So this game is called This or That. It's super easy. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things. And you, just off the top of your head, tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, my friend? I think so. (laughs) You got this. Let's do it. Grits or oatmeal? Grits. Yellow light, slow down or speed up? Oh, I probably speed up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Shopping online or in store? Can I say both? Yes, ma'am, you can. I like both. Me too. All right. On an airplane, window seat or aisle seat? Window. Okay. Toilet paper roll, over or under? Over. Okay, you weren't sure. You had to think about that a minute, didn't you? I had to. (laughs) Okay, house slippers or bare feet? Bare feet. TikTok or Twitter? TikTok. Exercise or extra fries? Extra fries. Girl, right, okay. (laughs) Prince or Michael Jackson? Oh, oh, that's a hard one. I'm, I'm going to say both. I can't choose. Okay, I'm not mad. Reality TV, yes, please, or I just can't? Oh, yes, yes, yes. My guilty pleasure. I, I'm not mad. We all got one. Super Bowl, <laughs> the game or the commercials? The halftime show. <laughs> I, dang it, I should have put that in there. I didn't even think of the halftime show. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on who it is, though, really. Depending yeah, on who it true, is. True. And finally, what would you say to your 13-year-old self right now? Ooh, my 13-year-old self. Um, you got this. You got this. I, I would need her to know that it's it's gonna it's gonna be okay. Oh, I think we all needed to tell our 13-year-old self that. Because we was going to do some things at 13. I mean, really, yes. that's okay. <laughs> Nicole, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is my pleasure. And for you all who are watching, that's it for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday.